If you've ever peeked under the hood of a Subaru WRX or a Legacy GT, chances are that you met the Subaru EJ engine, Subaru's legendary flat four that helped define the brand's performance efforts for over three decades. Today, we're giving you the story of the EJ engine, its rise, its glory days, and the engineering quirks that made it both beloved and, uh, notorious. I'm Nick from Koenig, and on this week's Engine Anatomy, we break down the EJ family of engines. Developed by Fuji Heavy Industries, Subaru's parent company, the EJ engine first debuted in 1989 and was introduced in the Subaru Legacy to replace the aging EA series. Unlike most four-cylinder engines, its pistons use a horizontally opposed action, moving side to side rather than up and down like punches thrown by a boxer, hence the name. They rely on 16 valves, came in both single, dual overhead cam variants, and were available in naturally aspirated and turbocharged versions. The fact that there were so many variants based on the same platform was unique for its era. Horsepower numbers over the years ranged from a very modest 90 horsepower to an impressive 341. All EJ engines share a few engineering hallmarks, such as an aluminum block with cast iron cylinder liners, aluminum heads, and a mix of open, semi-closed, and rare closed deck designs. The most preferred, pre-1995 EJ20G turbo engines. Closed deck blocks with oil squirters and a reputation for standing up to abuse. By 1995, open deck blocks became more common in the naturally aspirated and WRX EJ205 models, while turbocharged engines shifted to semi-closed decks by 2001. Though the EJ20 and EJ25 share nearly identical block castings, the EJ25 gets its extra displacement from a larger bore and a different crankshaft rather than longer rods. The EJ engine truly became a household name with the launch of the Impreza WRX in 1992, a turbocharged all-wheel drive model that brought rally tech to the streets. By 1994, the performance-minded STI version of the WRX took things even further with the EJ20s that produced upwards of 250 horsepower. Much of the technology and performance of the STI came as a result of Subaru's development and dominance in World Rally Championship competition, where they would win big in 1995 and go on to rack up 46 WRC victories before pulling out in 2008. Their efforts fully cemented the EJ's legacy around the world. In 1994, Subaru introduced the 2.5 liter EJ25 in Japan and it hit the US market in 1996. It powered a variety of models including the Impreza, Forester, Legacy, Baja, and eventually the WRX and STI in the US from 2004 on. Interestingly, it also sat under the hood of the 2005 Saab 92X Aero. If that's not odd enough, there was a twin turbo version of the EJ20 that accompanied Japanese legacies and Australian liberties between 1995 and 2005. So what's the best EJ to get? Many enthusiasts think that it's the EJ207 found in select JDM STI models at first before it was used in the STIs in Asia, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. It came with forged pistons, can rev higher than other EJ engines, and has been known to make considerable power with aftermarket assistance. And yes, the EJ series in general has a huge aftermarket support. Whether you're daily driving or chasing big power numbers, there's an entire ecosystem built around these engines. Like any engine platforms, it's not perfect by any means. There's a legion of social media users ready to fiercely attest to that fact. So we talked about the good, let's talk about the bad and the ugly. Earlier head gaskets were produced using graphite and filler material, which absorbed oil and coolant and then broke down. Subaru eventually changed to a multi-layer steel or MLS head gasket. Leaky head gaskets contributed to a loss of coolant and overheating that if untreated can be a huge problem. Excessive oil consumption due to piston ring failure is a common problem. Then there's the ring land and piston issues, often a result of extreme heat and pressure, which can lead to, you guessed it, more oil consumption and unwanted blow-by. In addition, higher mileage EJ oil pumps have been subject to scrutiny over the years. Their internal gears and O-ring failures can be catastrophic. With some of these issues often plaguing the EJ25, Subaru didn't recall the engine, but instead issued technical service bulletins or TSBs to dealers and offered temporary fixes. Some report that subsequent repairs could cost more than half the car's value and often failed again after the warranty expiration. Despite the public backlash, Subaru kept producing the EJ25 well into the 2010s to avoid costly redesigns. But back to the good stuff. Like any tuner-friendly engine, there are those that like the idea of plucking the EJ from its native home and dropping it into something completely different. 
Take for example the large number of classic VW Beetles powered with the Boxer for both street and Baja use. Its flat floor construction allows it to slip into the rear engine compartment and makes a massive impact in performance. And if taking to the skies is your thing, you'll find that companies like Viking Aircraft Engines, among others, power light aircraft with various EJ engines. So what's the verdict? Whether you see it as a ticking time bomb or a tuning dream platform, there's no denying the EJ engine family has left a lasting mark on automotive history. If you enjoyed this breakdown, drop a like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments what's your favorite EJ engine or what was your biggest EJ horror story. My name's Nick from Koenig. Thanks for watching.